Israel and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine and you servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistines. They were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was the son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem Judah, whose name was Jesse. And he had eight sons. And the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle. And the names of his three sons that went to the battle were Eliab the firstborn, and next unto him Abinadab the third Shalom. And David was the youngest. And the three eldest followed Saul. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep in Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself forty days. And Jesse said unto David his son, Take down for thy brethren and eat for this parched corn, and these ten loaves, and run to the camp to thy brethren. And carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand, and look how thy brethren fare, and take their pledge. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning, and left the sheep of the keeper and took and went, and Jesse had commanded him. He came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of death, Goliath by name. Out of the armies of the Philistines, who spake according to the same words, and David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel see he come up, and it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. We can see he didn't have to pay taxes. And David spake to the man that stood by and said, What shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine, and take away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? People answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man who killeth him. And Eliab his eldest brother heard what he spake unto the man, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. He said, Why camest thou down to hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride, and the naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? And he turned from him toward another, and spake after the same manner, and the people answered him again in the former manner. And when the word from her which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine and fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from a Jew. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock, and I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the beard, the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord has delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear. He will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with you. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head, also he armed it with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he is saved to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. And he took a staff in his hand, and chose the five smooth stones, out of the rope, and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in his strip. And his sling was in his hand, and he, and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on, and drew near to David, and the man that bare the sheep went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. For he was but a youth, and ruddy, and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all the assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. 
came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hastened and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag, took thence a stone, and slain it, and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and smote the Philistine and slew him, but there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran, stood upon the Philistine, and took the sword and threw it out of the sheath thereof, and slew him, and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. And the men of Israel and the Judah rose and shouted, Pursue the Philistines until thou come to the valley, and to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way to Shireen, even unto Gath and unto Ekron. And the children of Israel returned from chasing the Philistines, and they spoiled their tents. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put his armor in his tent. And when Saul saw David go forth against the Philistine, he said unto Abner, the captain of the host, Abner, whose son is it you? And Abner said, As I stole little, so king, I cannot tell. And the king said, Inquire thou whose son the stripling is. And as David returned to the slaughter of the Philistine, and Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. And Saul said unto him, Whose son art thou, thou young man? And David answered, I am the son of thy servant Jesse, the Bethlehemite. I don't know about you, but I find this to be one of the greatest stories in the Word of God. Outside of the Lord Jesus Christ, David is my favorite Bible character. I hope it's one of your favorite stories. Can you imagine David, just a young man? Fellas, I think he was a teenager. Can you imagine David is just a young man, and his brothers are off at the battle, and his dad wakes up and says, I want you to run, I want you to go to the fight, and let me tell you, the Bible says he ran. And he got there at the exact perfect moment. I think if he had walked, he would have missed this. But he obeyed that completely. Man, he took off running, and he comes here to the Valley of Elah. Young ladies, and man, it's just the way you can picture it. And you've got the two hills there, and you've got this big, ugly giant who steps out. And man, he begins to defy the armies of Israel. He begins to defy the God of Israel. And he's talking all his mess. He's talking all his junk, kind of like John John. And he's there making all this kind of noise. And man, I mean, he's just talking a bunch of smack that everybody knew. He could back up. That's the difference between him and John John. He could have backed up. <laughs> And he's just a young man. And he starts talking about who's going to do something to stop this guy's mouth. And word hits the street, and Eliab, his oldest brother, Eliab looks at him and says, Yo, why don't you shut up? Who'd you leave the chief with? You, you just, you, you're just here to run your little mouth, and you need to go home and take care of your little sheep. And David looked at Eliab and said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? I mean, this big giant here, don't you think what I'm saying is the truth? David wasn't worried about or very much interested in, you know, the fame that would come with it. David said, hey, there's a cause. This giant's a problem. He's defying our God. And I'm upset about it. So, noise goes back to Saul. Saul calls him in. David stands before the king. Just a teenager, fellas. Called him before the king. And David's starting to talk and explain why it is that he thinks that he could kill Goliath. Because Saul looked at him and said, no, you're just a boy. You're just a teenager. You're just a youth. What are you going to do? I mean, this guy's been fighting his whole life. He's a grown man. He's a giant. He's been fighting since he was a kid. Who are you against this guy? And David begins to tell the story. Well, I was there with a the bear and I was there with a the lion. Now, that might not sound like much, but if I saw a bear or if I saw a lion, I would run. But David stayed there and in order to protect the sheep, he went and killed the bear and he went and killed the lion. So he had a track record as a young man. He had already been serving the Lord. And when Saul said, how's this going to happen? David said, look, it's not about me. The battle is the Lord's. I'm not going out here in my own strength. I'm not going out here in my own power. I'm dependent on God, and God's able to give me the victory for this. So Saul got real spiritual. He wasn't real spiritual. He said, go, and the Lord be with thee. So here it is. David heads out there. Before he went, Saul thought, I put my armor on. Because the kid needs some armor. He showed up here with nothing. So Saul was the tallest man in Israel. The Bible teaches that. Here's David, he's just a young man, and he starts to put all this armor on, and he had not used it. You can imagine, he's clunking that stuff around. It didn't fit him, and David just starts taking it off. Saul says, what are you doing? you got to have armor. And David says, I have not proved these. I have not fought with these instruments before, instruments of the flesh. He said, man, I just can't do it. Well, Saul says, what are you going to do? And I think, well, the Bible doesn't say this, but obviously, you know, Saul's looking wondering. David shows up, five smooth stones. Picks up stones. He's got a sling. Now, he was good with the sling, no doubt. When you're out there watching sheep, you get bored. Right. 
So no doubt, man, he had practiced for that thing, and it was a weapon, and it was the weapon that he had. And man, that sling, that would have been a big sling, and that thing, when it went around, it really went around. So David walks out after Goliath's talking his mess, and Goliath looks at him and says, uh, who are you, little boy? And starts to talk about, if you come over here, I'm going to feed you to the birds. I'm going to just kind of like rip you apart, limb by limb. I'm going to feed you to the birds. You're bird food. And David looked at him and said, no, uh, you have this wrong. Uh, I'm going to take the head off. Now, can you imagine? I mean, the audacity. Here's a young man, just a teenage young man. Fellas, watch me. Had no armor on whatsoever. He's looking at a professional soldier. He's looking at the best soldier in the Philistine army. I mean, he was a big dog, no doubt about it. And here's David standing there, and David looks at him and says, uh, you're going to have your head cut off today. And David didn't say so that everybody would know that I'm the man. David said that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. See, David was going to go out there depending on God, and David was going out there, and he went and he faced the Goliath, and he let that sling go round and round, and that stone went through the air. And God directed it 